Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Issues of faith, race and identity are dominating the closing stages of the mayoral campaign. Yes, less than a week to go. And Labour's candidate Sadiq Khan today admits that the row which blew up over Ken Livingstone's comments this week could cost him support, especially among Jewish voters in the capital. But the Conservative candidate Zach Goldsmith is having difficulty shaking off the claim that this has been one of the nastiest campaigns in recent history. We'll talk to him uh, in a moment after Andrew Cryan reports. A huge turnout for Boris Johnson in Bexley helped the Conservatives win City Hall in both of the last two mayoral elections. So, with just days to go, we're better for their candidate this year, Zach Goldsmith, to try and get out the vote. Now, before this election campaign, Zach Goldsmith was probably best known as an environmental campaigner. He used to edit a magazine called The Ecologist and made his name as an MP, opposing the expansion of Heathrow Airport. But those aren't the issues that this election is really being fought on at all. I'm standing to build more homes to help Londoners earning average incomes get the keys to their first home. I'm going to protect the transport budget to keep London moving, but also to keep London growing. I'm going to make sure London is safe. I'll give the police the tools, the backing and the resources they need to keep us safe. On housing, he says he wants to build 50,000 new homes a year and make sure that Londoners get what he calls first chance to buy them. He's promised to freeze council tax, but won't make a similar promise on transport fares, saying it's vital that the capital gets the new infrastructure that it needs. But at West Ham Football Club this week for an event for show races and the red card, his Labour rival Sadiq Khan told us he thought Zach Goldsmith's plan for Londoners was one we couldn't afford. We've had for the last eight years a Conservative mayor, for the last six years a Conservative uh, Prime Minister, and it's not working for London. Londoners are being priced out of our city because of the Tory housing crisis. Fares have gone through the roof. We pay the most expensive public transport fares in all of Europe. And it's quite clear that uh, Zach would accept TfL's plans to increase the fares by a further 17%. Now, Zach Goldsmith has always said that he wants to fight a positive campaign that focuses on issues and not personalities. But according to a lot of people, actually what he's done is use the Conservative Party machine to attack his rival, Sadiq Khan. In particular, they say that he's spoken at the same events as Islamic extremists. And in his own words, the Labour candidate has said that when he worked as a human rights lawyer, he represented unsavoury characters. We need a better explanation from the uh, Labour candidate of what he's been doing in seeming to support these, these characters. But that line of attack has drawn criticism, even from Conservatives. The veteran political journalist Peter Oborn is a lifelong Tory, but says the nature of Zach's campaign will mean he's voting Labour for the first time this week. Sadiq Khan is as mainstream as you come. He fights anti-Semitism. He voted for same-sex marriage. Um, you know, he's, a, he's against extremism. And he's being portrayed as some untrustworthy radical in the literature uh, of, uh, of Zach Goldsmith. I and it, ask this question. If you can't vote for Sadiq Khan as, as a Muslim elected leader, what, what Muslim is there that you ever can vote for? And that's a very worrying thing. A very, this is why it is a very important election. It's very important that Londoners vote out Zach Goldsmith and his disgusting campaign. There's also been criticism of Zach Goldsmith's leaflets, some of which have seemingly targeted specific religious groups, like Hindus. Other leaflets called Sadiq Khan a radical, which was seen by some as a slur on his Islamic faith. It's very obvious what I was referring to when I described him as a radical candidate, as part of a radical process that has enveloped the Labour Party and taken our politics in an extraordinary direction. We have now an opposition party which is more extreme than at any time in my lifetime. But is Sadiq Khan really standing on a radical platform? When compared to Zach Goldsmith's own one-page summary of his policies, it appears to be almost the same offer. Looking at the one-page policy platform, it's amazing how similar it is to Sadiq Khan's. The only real difference is that uh, Zach Goldsmith's promising no council tax increase, whereas Sadiq Khan is promising no fares increase on TfL's system. Other than that, 
it's almost the same plug. Yeah, so. But perhaps the biggest question that will be answered this week is whether Zach Goldsmith's approach will be enough to persuade enough of his supporters to vote and make him the next Mayor of London. <laughs> Welcome, um, Zach Goldsmith. Let's just talk about the whole uh, campaign first. A few yeah. years ago, you said in a, in a newspaper interview that the idea of you standing for mayor would be like a suicide mission. Um, is that how it's proving? Much more difficult than you anticipated? It is a completely new experience for me, obviously. It couldn't be more different than fighting a constituency election where you meet everyone, you talk to everyone, anyone who wants to ask you questions can. This is a big city, 8.5 million people, 600 billion pound economy, 5.8 million voters. It's huge. So it's a very different campaign um, but but it's it's been a magnificent experience for me and I, and I feel very positive about the campaign we've only got four days to go three days to go but it is um, I feel that the more public meetings I do the more people I talk to the greater the momentum is in the right direction that's the experience on the ground and I, I hope that takes me over the line on May the 5th but it's going to be a um, challenge let's of course. something else because I was quite struck by this as well I think people have had enough of white male Etonians I'm not sure my chances uh, would be very high. Is that also being proved by this campaign? You haven't really found the pulse of the capital and you don't no, kind of I, I don't look agree, like the capital. I, I don't agree with that at all. What does the capital look like? It's the most diverse city in the world, or one of. Um, it, it is, and that is the strength of Greater London. That's why London is the greatest city in the world. Strip away that diversity, London would be a very pale imitation of what it is. Uh, so there is no one person who can capture London. You, by definition, you, you can't stand on that basis. But the comments I made that you're quoting, I mean, they were, they were heartfelt comments. If you, you know, I forget when, two three, four years ago. Um, it, 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 the standing for mayor was not even c close to being on my radar. Right. I was in the middle and of things, two or and three, things two or three, three big campaigns. Alice, Alice Thompson, conservative um, columnist, says Goldsmith uh, is uh, unencumbered um, by many principles but fails to convince us that he wants to be in City Hall. He doesn't look as if he cares whether he wins or not. Well, so that's actually a, a stylistic thing. It's a sense of leadership thing. It's a sense of you're not, you're not convincing anyone well, that you could actually lead that city. By, unencumbered by principles is an odd thing to say. I mean, I, I can be a accused of many things, as any politician can be, but I've always stuck by my principles as an MP. That's why yeah. I'm described often as an independent-minded campaigning MP. It's why I was returned at the last election with the biggest increased majority of any single sitting MP in the country, the best reference an MP can possibly hope for. You can't get a better reference than than, uh, than that so, from your constituents. So how is it after we've had a, conser a Conservative mayor for um, two terms and a Conservative government mm. pulling the strings, controlling, doing what they can with London, that yeah. it doesn't show, it doesn't look as if you're breaking through or there's a record that well, the I, voters are reacting I, to? I don't agree with that. I mean, it's it, the only thing that, that, that you have to go by are a couple of um, opinion polls that are published. Uh, I'm on the ground talking to voters day in, day out, every second of every minute. I do public meetings which are standing room only in every part of London and the reaction is is overwhelmingly positive. It is true that people have not engaged with this campaign until quite recently, but that's not surprising. We had a... Right, an and that was the problem, was it? Well, we'll come on to... Well, well, is, well, and does there problem. lie the reason it's, for the change yeah, of... But we'll come on to that in a moment. But this okay. point as well, because because Boris Johnson has been on the campaign trail with you a lot, is this a kind of nightmare scenario here, really, that you've got to follow him as a personality, but you don't have a particularly... He hasn't got a particularly good record to defend it's, that you can it, point to. He's certainly got a big personality, but he's unique in British politics. There is no one in British politics from left to right who is like Boris Johnson. You see, you had a few clips there, but I mean, I've been out on the trail with him many, many times. He is swamped. He's one of those figures. There's no one else in British politics who has that reaction. Anyone who chooses to stand as Boris Mark II is heading for a crash. So, right. so that's still, doing But that. in terms of the record then, so the problem is, presumably, unless you're going to tell me that, you know, 5,000 affordable homes, the sum total for a, a, a capital with I'll a population you, growing 100,000 is good enough. Is it good his, enough last look, year? If you look at his record in the whole, it is a good record. He, he was elected in 2008 at a time when the recession clouds were hovering over London. He imbued the world with a confidence in London, which London badly needed at the time. Fine, I, you, I don't think anyone else could have done that. But what about that? When you come, if you were inheriting this, though, the but, last okay. year of Emeraldy, how do you account for just 5,000 affordable homes? A mayor that's been in but, for eight I'm years, a Conservative not, government... I'm not going to pretend that enough homes have been built, but equally, he built more homes than Ken Livingston did. He built more social homes than Ken Livingston did. This is not a Tory thing. Not that social the, homes, the, council the, homes. The, but, the yeah. reality is, the reality is, we have a housing crisis in London. The gap between supply and demand has got so wide now that you could be earning a really significant salary and have and, no chance of getting on the housing. And I didn't want to so interrupt that, there. So, but why on earth, given what we've just said, would anyone vote and believe that the Conservative uh, candidate here was going to be the person who was going to come up with the answers? Because they've seen, they've seen many years with a people, rising population, and you haven't risen to it. People will look at my manifesto. I hope I'm incredibly proud of it. It is a, it is a comprehensive 
comprehensive plan for tackling the big challenges that London faces. It's not just the one page that was shown on the clip just there. It is a detail-costed, bulletproof manifesto. And people will look, I hope, at my record. I don't make promises that I can't keep. That's why I've done well as a constituency MP. It's why I've managed to get a good deal from government over the last six oh. years for my constituency. I wonder whether you accept two issues. points you make there, whether, whether so, you will accept. But, but I, just, I need to make, finish this one, if you don't mind. Right, it's not, yeah, it, in politics, we're, you know, we're four days before, uh, away from an election. People are not going to judge either me or Sadiq Khan or anyone else on the back of our promises. Promises are cheap in politics. And politics is a world littered with broken promises. But they will look at our records. And I encourage anyone to look at my record and compare it with that of any of my rivals in this race. Okay. It is a good record. It is a record the, the, of delivery, well, of doing what I say I'm Well, this do. involves your record and also involves Boris Johnson. How is it, I mean, you want to be judged on your record, that you uh, completely failed or have failed to persuade the Chancellor of the government um, to deprive London Transport of £2.8 billion to take it away from its budget at this time for investment, for improvements for the two minutes. How did you do that? You, I mean, you don't. I, I, I've successfully challenged the Chancellor's attempt to remove almost a billion pounds from the Met's budget. Let's you just. But, but, no, no, but, but I'm making. Yeah, but obviously, but, look, I'm not I haven't asked you about the police. Tim, Let's just Tim, talk about the Chancellor because you've made it. that a very I, big is, thrust of your campaign. It, not, How have you not given I'm your not record and that you're meant to be someone that's going to be able to influence government? How did you not stop them? Removing two point eight billion pounds over the next four I'm years in the transport budget. I'm not going to say that as a backbench MP in Richmond Park and North Kingston, I've won every battle on behalf of London. Obviously, I haven't. I'm not controlling government, but I've won so some. Really, you've lost that one, though. I've though. won some really significant battles for London, not least protecting the police budget. That but is on a that massive one, on that one, you London. know how fundamentally. The campaign where Sadiq Khan was nowhere to be seen. On transport, I have pledged, as, as your clip just showed, I've pledged to protect the transport budget. It makes that pledge even more important. Yes, transport for London has been cut. That is why we cannot. We cannot afford a £2 billion fares offer for London. If we did, it would decimate the transport budget, London would grind to a standstill, and we wouldn't solve the, the, and, the and housing crisis. And you accept, crisis. and I've heard you accept, and of course you know if you're going to be maintaining that investment, you know fares have to go up to pay for it according to the business plan for transport for London. So you, are, you must, here and now, clarify that fares must go up under a Zach Goldsmith. In, 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 in any programme, uh, or any promise, any manifesto, any action plan for London, you have a set of priorities. My number one priority is to protect the transport budget. If I don't protect the transport budget, London will grind to a standstill. Human beings yeah. travelling on the tube already and today we know that. And are living... Well, most people don't know that. Are experiencing conditions that would be illegal to farm We know farm you animals. might want to protect so I will the protect budget, that but you budget. can only after protect that, it, Kenny, for the reasons so, I've given you about the money that's so been withdrawn that, from you. After protecting the budget, which is the overwhelming priority, that is the commitment I've made. It, even if I do protect that budget, incidentally, it's still not big enough. Yeah. But after protecting that budget, I will bear down on cost at every opportunity and I will hunt for those inefficiencies in TfL, of which, of course, there are many. But I cannot give you a fair's promise now. I can't Fine. do that right. because I don't have sight of all the books. I don't know so where you, things are going to be in so three or four So you know that time. it's possible under that goal, because you're going to be a very honest of politician course, to everyone possible. that it's that's, possible that's that these why, fairs are going to go up, aren't That's they? why I haven't made it. It's that, possible they're going to have course, to go anything's up. anything's possible, which is why I cannot make a plan pledge on fares. My pledge is to ensure that London keeps moving and my pledge is to ensure that I'll grow the transport network because if I do not do that, we won't solve the housing crisis. We might come back. We'll get a chance to talk about the Greenbelt okay. a little bit later because I know you feel strongly. I mean, talking Very of Boris strongly. Johnson as we were earlier and on uh, the big issue of this weekend, Boris Johnson says there's an ideological continuum between the views of Ken Livingstone about Israel, the position of Jeremy Corbyn and the views of Sadiq Khan. Uh, which some people have taken to indicate that Steve Khan is, is you know, anti-Semitic in some form. Now, you were asked about this yesterday on the Today programme, and it was suggested to you that Mr Khan has not been, is not, has never been anti-Semitic. And you didn't actually answer completely clearly. Can you be absolutely clear what you say I don't, I don't about believe I don't believe Sadiq Khan is anti-Semitic. I've never said, and, and, I, and I, I'm ambiguous, in my, I was ambiguous in my answer because I can't tell you what he was been, what he's been saying 15, 10, 20 years ago, but I can tell you that he said no, you, the right... No, you, you can't, you can't, but, but you, can't, I, you, can't no, you can't add that little, little caveat no, no, to I'm the saying, end. Okay, there, I, no, I, my can't. answer very clearly then is I don't believe he's anti-Semitic and Thank I've you. never suggested he is. Do you think Boris Johnson's uh, comments were, 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 were unfortunate then? You disassociate yourself with his comments. I don't think that's what Boris said. Boris is I'm quoting directly what he said. But he didn't describe uh, Sadiq Khan as anti-Semitic. No, he but that's, that's what, well, what was he meaning yeah, if he, he wasn't saying I'll that? I'll tell you what he's meaning. He described Sadiq Khan, Ken Livingstone, Jeremy Corbyn, John McDonnell as being part of the same envelope, the same package, the same Labour Party. Sadiq well, Khan nominated Jeremy that, Corbyn. He has said he That's an obvious so thing. This was in relation to him describing a virulent anti-Semitism. He's been part of the same, the same programme. He is an architect of what has happened to the Labour Party. And the Labour Party today, from the top to the bottom, has got a massive problem you, you've accepted, with anti-Semitism. Anyway, you've accepted, Richard, that, that 
that Sadiq Khan no, no, is and has not been anti-Semitic. The former party chairman, Baroness Vazi, says that Sadiq Khan isn't an exceptional enough Muslim to uh, stand for London Mayor, uh, which Muslim is. And she went on to take um, uh, Boris Johnson on on that. He said, you know, you're better than that, Boris Johnson. So she certainly thinks she knows what he was saying. Well, look, Boris Johnson said what he said, and I think he's right. There is a continuum there. There is a package of which Sadiq Khan... Of course he's going to wriggle to separate himself from Ken Livingstone today because of the scandal that Livingstone finds himself embroiled in. Two right. weeks ago, they were on the same platform. And you call it Two a wriggle, you that... call it a wriggle but, you, but we're making absolutely clear again that you've got no evidence no, and no one's got I, anything I to suggest I don't... That, 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 that Sadiq Khan in any way shares I'm not going his to views. Him. I'm not going to accuse Sadiq Khan of being anti-Sadiq. And you accept he acted said, very quickly well, had, didn't he? I think he had to act very quickly, but I wish he'd acted as quickly last time Ken Livingstone made these kinds of statements and where Sadiq Khan was one of a tiny number of people who went public defending him. Well, I think him. you found, if you're so, talking about the Jewish newspaper reporter outside City Hall, I think you'll find that Ken Livingstone, uh, in the end, having been initially suspended from office, was reinstated. So there was no... Well, well, so, he was yeah, on the right side of the argument, wasn't he? If you're defending what Ken Livingstone said to the newspaper reporter, having described the guy as a Nazi, Nazi security... Guess what? I don't have to. I don't have to defend either way or whatever. Okay, I only okay, ask no, you. But, but I, well, let's move on to this thing. Have you found, let's be absolutely clear, have you found at any stage in your research or the research of those people working for you uh, any evidence of Sadiq Khan saying, doing, being extremist in any way? Yeah. Right. He's not extreme. You said that uh, last night, yesterday. I, I said that many times. Um, yeah. What's wrong with a lawyer defending unsavoury characters? And this is, these are the words so of Sadiq a, Khan let, himself. Let, what's wrong with let, that? Let me make what's a, wrong with that first? I, I, let me make a point. Um, we, we, when Jeremy Corbyn was standing for leadership, he was attacked by people like Yvette Cooper for having given legitimacy to people with extreme views, having shared platforms. And her view at the time, very clearly, was that you do not do that. These people should not have any association at all with the Labour Party. That same question has been asked of Sadiq Khan, who's links to extremists, but, not, but I'm not saying you, he's extremist. But why are you raising, why are you, why are you citing uh, Yvette you Cooper? If you cite Yvette Cooper, you need to tell the viewers that Yvette Cooper, not long ago, said, uh, describe so your describe camera as completely racist. She did. And I, and so is she it, right in both and accounts? It, it puzzles me that she would expect people like me and the newspapers and everyone else who's asking these questions to apply a, a lower set of standards for Sadiq Khan. Let's I don't just, understand let's just why ask that you very, would be uh, Just case. quickly again, because we need to kind of unpick it a little bit. But, but I, is I, there I, anything wrong with a lawyer defending unsavoury characters? Or, or, you know, are lawyers... Or link, good lawyers, just the preserve of the, 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 of the, the super rich the, or the, the powerful? Links, the links that have been described in relation to Sadiq Khan go very, very far, very, very deep. Some of them You're relate, not answering the question, Some of them though. relate to his work as a lawyer. Some of them wait to, relate I'm to his work as a lawyer as a friend. First. We'll come on. Some of them relate to his work as an MP. But I think for someone who chooses to share a platform with a person who talks about chucking Jews in the sea and drowning them, and You're, then to apologise for it, that person, no, and then to apologise no, for it's that no person good. I don't, I don't think it would be appropriate. Talk. The viewers don't know what you're referring to there. It's no point going there. The person that might have said that or might not okay, have said as that, a lawyer, is not as here we to refute. I'm asking lawyer. about Sadiq Khan okay, here on As this. a lawyer, to choose to represent one of the people involved in 9-11, to choose to stand up and try and overturn the British government's so you, decision... So you want to... You, I, I've, I've, already to said, I've, already, I've already said it's not appropriate. These people aren't here. Point. These individuals are not here to defend or give any sense of context, which, of course, but people are saying... People are saying, like Peter O'Born, is exactly what you're trying okay. to do here. If we it are, is dog-whistling, isn't it? You are sending a message. He says it's repulsive. There are many, many examples of Sadiq Khan having shared platforms with, having given oxygen to, having made apologies yeah. for people who have extreme views. That is I've, a legitimate I've heard those question. Words before. That Can is I... a legitimate question to us. The idea that someone standing for mayor of London with a big security remit should expect those questions not to be asked, and then for that person to try and close down questions by being casual with the use of words like I'll racism, help you on this one then, just quickly. Just very quickly. Does he wrong. make does City Khan make London less safe? Yes or no? I think he's got appalling judgment. Does he make does he make it less safe? Uh, if you are if you are providing platforms and cover and oxygen for people who wish to do the city harm, that is not a clever thing to do. Right. You haven't. I know you haven't said it doesn't make it less safe. Does it make him less able to run London's transport system as a junior transport yeah, minister? Before? There are many no. other reasons why you can't run. What about, what about, about housing? Thing. What about housing? Does it make there, him there are not many other reasons broadly why. for all the most important things about the job? It doesn't make him unsuitable. Uh, there are many reasons why I believe Sadiq Khan is unsuitable for the job. But there are but in the big areas you, you agree that I these issues... I think his housing have... policies don't add up, and I'd love to get an opportunity to talk about housing. I, I think his transport policies, as I've already explained, don't add up. I'd love to be able to talk about when that. We... Um, when we, um, nothing when to do we with consider the, the people, now. when we consider the people with whom you have, some people will say or accuse you of attempting to smear Khan by association with. But these aren't we find smears. that he actually he actually opposes their views. He's fallen out with them. Um, you know, he 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 has taken a view controversial in the Muslim faith of agreeing to same-sex marriage. Okay, to, is is it legitimate? No, I'm I, asking you a question. Okay, but, but I'm asking you a question. But, but it's not absurd what you're coming saying. back with another one. You're suggesting that it is not legitimate to ask questions about someone no. with links to people who 
you wish to do this and what happens when he does that when he does that what i'm i'm not suggesting that sadiq khan has dodgy views i've never i think he's opportunistic and i think he's got appalling judgment and i think he should never have done the things that he's done Uh, but it is a matter of judgment not opinion and and i think i am entitled as is anyone else who's raised this questions and many people have to ask those questions and i think think what is wrong is to suggest as yvette cooper did or as peter obon did that there's something racist about asking questions of a person because let's keep it on the muslim let's keep it on let's keep it on wrong let's keep it on judgment then and the judgment that is good enough it's okay for you and it's okay for conservative parliamentary candidates to meet people to meet such people to meet uh, uh, to hold uh, uh, muslim forums in south london Why, why is it okay for you you have to explain your question. Well, you have met, you have met individuals who you cite sure as being Sadiq Khan's... What, what, what's, I'm, I'm what's sure, the difference? I'm sure I, you've been out on the trail with me. I, I think you're talking about a selfie with Suleiman Ghani, is that well, right? What, you know, what, what's you've the difference? You've been out on the trail with me, you saw a clip there. I, I do hundreds, sometimes thousands of selfies every day. I can't do a CRD check on everyone who does a selfie with me, if that's, if that's what you're suggesting. But, 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 what but I the would candidate, not, the what candidate I would in not, tooting... Well, let me ask you a question. What I would not do is share a platform with someone who is on the wrong side of the ideological battle that we're engaging in. I would share a platform in order to challenge them, but I certainly wouldn't share a platform in any other context. Uh, and, and I certainly wouldn't do a selfie with someone if I knew who they were. But, but the candidate, but your conservative candidate, conservatives were actively inviting him to come well, out and it, it to bring a, his it, friends. It was, look, I can't answer that. I don't know. It was a right. public meeting. It was a public meeting that I was invited to speak at. I enjoyed speaking at it. It was about encouraging young Muslim people to get involved in politics. It was a very effective event in the audience, along with a lot of other people, apparently. We which, now, we've which learned. Sadiq Khan was does a lot, and after all, this good. was his and constituency. That's good stuff, and that's good stuff. Fine, right. Um, but it's very think... different to sharing a platform and uh, apologising for someone saying something which is, is it? totally about it. This was his constituency. Okay. What was your excuse? You were going into an area I, I, which didn't even I, have I anything mean, to do with. Because it's not apologising for views or making excuses for views which are totally abhorrent. And clearly there is a difference there. If, if someone were to say we want to drown Israel's Jews in the sea, I would not you, say that's flowery you've mentioned talk. That, you, you, mentioned that, you mentioned that again. And if you were like, right, referring okay, to that individual, I mean, the, the individual concern is absolutely made clear. Uh, he's never uh, promoted any violence, any terrorism of, in, in any form. Anyway, the let's, just, I'm let, about now. let's just talk well, about the, this. I'm, let's I'm talk about the Louise, wider I'm form. I'm quoting Louise Elman, who's a Labour let's MP, talk about who the wider, is as appalled by this as I am. Let's talk about the wider question here. Just a yeah. final thought, really, is that, and it was a, an FT editorial uh, this week, that, you know, if you are going to lose, would it not be better that you didn't do it with dishonour? And people are going to remember this campaign. But I this. reject the premise of what you're saying. It is not dishonourable to ask to question a candidate's judgment. That's what happens in politics. And it's right that those questions, just as my background, uh, my the things that I've said, things that I've written, written in The Ecologist magazine, have been poured over by Sadiq Khan's team, and that is fair enough. That's fair enough. If I, if, if I have said things in the past, which I don't believe I have, but which I ought to explain now, then go for it. That's okay. what happens in politics. There is no dishonour in asking questions about the judgment of other candidates. Okay. But the overwhelming emphasis in my campaign has been about my action plan for London. Okay, had... Mustam, um, must, um, thanks um, so much um, indeed for, for uh, being with us today, um, that goldsmith. Yeah. You can see a full list of all great the candidates if we could have spoken standing about in the mayoral election on the...